Um, what I realized looking at the work was on one hand, we were part of a very small group. There was the Honor Backs crowd. Then there were some New Yorkers who were like retired New York porn stars like Candida Royale and uh, Annie Sprinkle. Retired is maybe too far of a word, but they, you know, they, they weren't ingenues. They had been around the block. There was a, a group of these New York women who weren't particularly lesbian. You know, they were bi, straight identified. There was us. Uh, and then a couple of other just, you know, you'd get a call from some woman in Wisconsin or Austin, Texas, who would say, I'm making an erotic video in my basement. <laughs> you know, and they're so excited. And we all felt like we just crawled out of our eggs. Um, most of us had never really seen anything in of what normally gets called X-rated theater. You know, we were pretty ignorant of blue movies and we were just, all we knew is that we weren't represented and those things weren't controlled by us and we were gonna do our own thing and finally we had this technology video that allowed it. And I think the main thing that brought to public consciousness was the notion that women had a sexual self-interest, which should be perfectly obvious, but is constantly being challenged. You know, like you couldn't possibly be truly interested in sex. Someone must be paying you to say that or you're trying to please somebody. It can't just organically come from within you. And we had an emphasis on, hey, we're going to show women coming. Yeah, we're going to keep the camera running. <laughs> and you're going to see what a woman really looks like when she comes. Maybe I should just, I'm going to tell people one of the important camera tricks about showing female orgasm. Because whether it's um, the male cum shot or the female cum shot, you need to be ready to go before, you know, the camera turns on. You know, time is money when you're running either the film or the video camera. And you can't just say, hey, take your time, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever. We're here for you. Have another glass of wine. Have another glass of wine. No. You know, it, it's, it's, you're expected to really perform like a puppet. You know, like, and now we need you to come, please, <laughs> right now. Uh, and the way you do that with women, almost in every case, is you get out a Hitachi magic wand. And um, they use it until they get real close. And with that kind of vibrator, you're going to get close pretty darn fast. I mean, as long as your hormones are in the right sequence, you turn on your wand and boom, you're going to get to plateau really quick. And then you say, I'm ready. And then the camera rolls. So no matter what you've seen of women coming on screen, <clears throat> if they were really coming, there was probably a little vibrator fluffing that happened just before the cum shot that they may not have shown on camera. Um, I don't know why I got on that tangent, but I, I, we did a lot of things that I think left an impressive legacy. Um, what is difficult for me now is when I run into um, people who are new to the notion of porn, um, young people, when they think porn, they think Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton and some celebrity who leaked a sex tape, you know, supposedly. And those movies do not show women who are engaged in their own sexual adventure and explosion in the least. And it just seems like this really sad, pathetic, you know, like, I, I wanted to be famous, so I made a sex tape kind of a endeavor. Uh, and it's, you sort of sit there and go, hmm, you know, I didn't do 30 years of lesbian and feminist erotica so that Paris Hilton could be an idiot. You know, like, you sort of like get, you get disappointed. Like, really? That's the takeaway from this? Um, I, I looked at, the work that Honey Lee did at Bessie Street, and I see someone who, I mean, her roots are as much in fine art and surrealist photography as, as you know, a man ray, right? And, and, and that, um, that was probably lost on some of our audience, not just her, but many of the artists we published. They were the kind of people who would have been in the Museum of Modern Art if they hadn't been working class dykes. I mean, to be perfectly frank. They, you know, they were not going to be Robert Maplethorpe, even though they 
Um, that is the kind of looks and styles that they were exploring. They were doing things on, on a very sophisticated level. And you could enjoy them just because, wow, you know, female nudes or look at these hot women doing all these crazy things. I mean, that, that's exciting. But if you um, had some background or interest in erotic art and art photography, it was like a whole new level of awesomeness. And I don't know, certainly it affected the fine art world. I mean, I, I hear about shows all the time now about gender and sexuality. And I find them fascinating, although they seem to think that they have just sprung, formed from Zeus's head. You know, they don't often, you know, talk about, well, who begat who. And maybe that's just a, a snotty old person thing to say, to, you know, to want those hat tips. But um, I do often look for them. Uh, I just got asked if I wanted to add some curation to a show about looking at the male body. And I'm like, really? You're asking me who's in this show? You know, and then I, I was like, I wanted to know who was acquainted with it. And I was genuinely surprised that they hadn't asked any of the feminist art pioneers who, who did this kind of work. How, how could they have not even come up? So I don't know. I'm a, every question you're asking, you're probably seeing this, this defensiveness on my part, or I don't know if it's a defensiveness or a sense of, of yearning or grief. I don't know. It may be because of having to move out of Bessie Street this, this week after 30 years. But I, I've been told many times by wonderful people, you changed my life and you made a big difference to the world. But I wanted to make a bigger difference. I am really disappointed. <laughs> my revolution has not appeared, and you know I want my ticket back. I wanted so much more. I am horrified by. I feel like we're we're back to Tab Hunter and Sandra D when it comes to popular culture, uh, and it's. Um, I don't like the conservatism. I don't like the moral majority. I don't like the the shame and the hatred around sex. I am horrified by the kind of people we see running for office and the lack of movements to counteract them. You know, I, I, I do feel under siege and I don't know when or how that's going to turn around. Um, <laughs> this is good stuff. Um, well, I mean, I, I I'm 42 right now, uh, 43, um, and I often wonder in, in where I get a lot of value out of, out of having the privilege of hanging out with my peers and you know being able to chat with Betty Dodson and, and Carol and, and Joni and, and other peers in my community. Um, I'm really curious if you know that 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 joke of a liberal is just a conservative without kids. You know if that's if that's true. You know, and, and I'm right now not a breeder that I know of. Um, and, you know, how things change as, as we get older in age um, and how much of what's being repeated is just the fact that, you know, our passions shift or, or we, our hunger or whatever just kind of mellows to a certain degree. Um, and then there's a younger generation that's coming through with that vim and vigor. And now we have Google, and if you're not on the top 10, if you're not on the first page of the search results, you don't exist. <laughs> you know, and I would think that some, some of the, the artistic peers you're thinking about who, who aren't being consulted, just people just don't know about them because somebody got this great idea to do an art show, Googled a couple of things, and then sent out some emails. You know, so there's a great do-it-yourself kind of quality that I love because there's some spontaneity and some newness that happens. But then the, those tips of the hat are so easy for people to miss. And, and I think, you know, in, in talking to Robert Lawrence about mentorship in the sex ed community, especially the gay men's community, I mean, he's like the mentors all by. Um, 